All right, guys. Today we're going to be measuring our rod bearing clearances. I'm going to go ahead and show you all the tools that you'll need to measure your clearances with aftermarket rods and aftermarket rod bolts. First of all, you're going to need a rod bolt stretch gauge. I got this from DCR. It comes with a relatively inaccurate gauge and it's only accurate to a half a thousandth. You can get some that are accurate to a one ten thousandth of an inch, but it's better than nothing. Essentially what you're going to do is measure the free non-torqued length of the bolt. So let me go ahead and put it in there. Alright. And it's zeroed already. Alright, so you're going to twist the dial to where the zero is on the pointer. And then when you install the bolt into the connecting rod and torque it to the spec that you're given. So uh, I ended up going with 65 foot pounds and I got my five and a half thousandths stretch on the bolt. And what that means is the bolt is at its optimal clamping load because the if you just go off of what the torque wrench is giving you then you don't know how much that bolt is stretched and every manufacturer ARP and uh, these are actually pankle rod bolts from DCR so uh, we'll see how well they hold up but they're used in NASCAR and Formula One and they make very what good connecting rods and pistons for Formula One so Hopefully their ingenuity is built into these bolts and they can survive high RPMs. So you're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing that you did with the main bearings and measure an X and Y axis of each rod journal. And I was getting 1.9576 to 1.980. The 81 actually is the biggest that I got, but this is only the first time or the first series of measurements. So I'm going to do this whole process four or five more times until I'm set on a clearance. But I'm just giving you guys an idea of how it works. So go ahead and take a one to two inch micrometer and uh, set it up to the measurements that you're getting. And then you place it in a little bench vise, like so. Alright, so here's a good tip on setting up your dial bore gauge properly. You're going to want to take your micrometer when you go to mount it in the vise and mount it the same exact way when you go to zero the bore gauge that you're going to be measuring with the bore gauge. So if you're going to be measuring your clearance with the rod vertically, like so, with the anvils pointing vertically up and down, you're going to want to have the micrometer pointing up and down as well. You're going to get a difference in uh, where you actually zero your gauge if you mount it like so. And that's something I just recently found out. So. I just want to pass that information off to you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and measure or see what we get. I have the dial bore gauge already zeroed and you're going to want the actual anvil tip that moves in and out which is the small, the small point here is what actually swivels in and out to give you the, very, the difference between the micrometer and the inner diameter of your bearing housing. You're going to want to have it on the top because if you have it down, gravity is going to push down and give you a false reading. So go ahead and put the tip in first. Make sure it's straight. I'm going to go with, it's anywhere between 
two twenty-eight ten thousandths and three thousandths of an inch. So there's two nine three. Yeah, so right there is about, we're going to go with three thousandths of an inch. And then you're going to want to move the dial bore gauge to the inner surface to measure the, for taper. Starting to get two sevens. There's a three one, two nine. You got to be very. It's hard to do it steadily with a camera in one hand. Normally, I'd be holding it with two hands. See, so there's a three zero, a three one, three zero. Two nine, two nine. So yeah, and all I'm doing is rocking the gauge up and down ever so slightly. And you can see how much of a change you get just by rocking it up and down. But you want to make sure that it is centered in the bore. Uh, popped out, but you get the idea. It's not that hard. You just got to have the right tools.